Hey y'all, how y'all doing? Uh, we had a couple of requests to uh, to read Ward's speech that he made at our reunion. Uh, some people couldn't hear him, so we're gonna try to go through this pretty quick, uh, just so everyone can hear. I know he probably posted it, in, in fact, I think he did post it. But anyway, here we go. Good evening, I'm Ward Blakeman. Well, not really, but Anyway, before proceeding with my prepared opening, I have some announcements. First, there will be three separate group photos taken by our photographer, blank, this evening. Class of 68, class of 69, then all classes together. Additionally, she will be taking photos of the various groups as needed throughout the evening. Uh, finally, please bring folding chairs to the picnic tomorrow, which has already happened. If you have an extra, please bring to assure that our out-of-town classmates have a comfortable place to sit. Welcome everyone, graduates of 68, 69, and all other classes and special guests. We're glad that you are here with us tonight. Lynn Fontenot, myself, and others have done our best to make this the most enjoyable, memorable reunion possible. From the very first planning meeting, it's been a labor of love and a team effort. Many people contributed. From that first meeting, we have continuously shaped and honed the specifics of this reunion into focus. Detectives have jumped into action, getting the ball rolling and find, to find and inform people. Venue selection, budget menu, cake specifics, music selection, photographer, lots of details came from group input. There's the banquet hall decoration team and those who volunteered their help when a New need presented itself. How about Keith Harris stepping up with his impressive slideshow contribution? Yay! All the way from Michigan. Will everyone on our reunion team please stand? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Every team needs a leader, a captain, dedicated to getting best results. We are fortunate that our captain, Lynn Fontenot, worked diligently throughout the process and always at the very center of it all. Every detail thought, rethought, with one goal, success. Tonight and our picnic tomorrow is what victory looks like. Join me in a round of applause for Lynn to show our appreciation for her work and leadership. <laughs> okay. Way back in 1966, news of a new high school spread throughout New Orleans East community. It was to be built on a track of land on Reed Road across the street from Joe Brown Park and not far from 7th Precinct Fire and Police District Complex. It was going to be a really nice facility on a big campus and first class in every respect. Also, it was going to be co-educational, I don't know, whatever that is. Take a moment and think back about how this new school impacted your life. It was a fork in your life. Uh, let's see, I lost my place here. Uh, It was a fork in your life roadmap, altering plans, bringing unforeseen changes. Not much else was known about it initially. Name, mascot, school colors, etc., would come later. For me, none of that mattered. I was a sophomore at All Boy St. Aloysius High, that's Ward that is, located near the French Quarter on Ramport and Esplanade. For two years, I spent three hours plus each day on a public service bus as I traveled to and from school. This new school presented hope of a wonderful change. To end the daily wasted hour on the bus created time for me to play school sports. Co-ed meant my raging hormones had purpose. <laughs> my 15 year old life was complete. When the school was finished, we learned that we would become the Abramson Commodores. Yay! We came from various schools. Some students were looking forward to it. Others were not. Those not looking forward to it were reluctantly leaving friends behind at schools they loved, frustrated as they were forced to into unwelcome change. Think back, which were you? Happy or upset? Regardless, we became Abrams and Commodores in 1967. Social change was sweeping our nation back then. Racial segregation was on the way out and integration of races was in. To achieve racial mix in school, busing was introduced. Challenges that had not previously been faced by high school students would be ours on a day one at this new school. Questions were plentiful about how these historic 
and needed changes would impact our lives. We were headed into uncharted waters. As it turned out, it was smooth sailing for the classes of 68 and 69. No pun intended. We were fortunate to have some terrific educators on the staff, guiding us beginning on the school's first day. Those educators were represented, are represented tonight by Mr. Peter Gabb, a teacher who was always a student favorite during his career. A principal was selected with a surname, fitting of someone to steer this new ship. That guy named Helm. <laughs> That's pretty cute. I like that. In the school, good boy. Uh, in the school's office, Ruby Sillers was a sweet person and always helpful. She was a lady who cared about our success so much that she fudged a little later in my life when I needed help in the form of a good referral from the school to get a job. I'm certain that she helped others too. As soon as the doors opened, students participated in extra curricular school activities, band, choir, sports, journalism, and on and on. Some of our very own talented musicians that we need rocked the gymnasium at dances, while others gave more traditional performances there and elsewhere. There were different groups of friends within our classes, the scholarly, the jocks, the partiers, <laughs> etc. Everyone got along in the best possible way, and friendships always overlap groupings. We treated other, each other with respect and became a school where friendship and harmony ruled. Like the words in the Youngblood song, let's get together and love one another right now. We were strong together and did not allow hate into our idealistic world at Abramson. As we reflect tonight and share memories of our time together at Marion Abramson Senior High School, let us recognize that we have left there with a great foundation for everything that followed. Not just book knowledge, but lessons in becoming responsible, caring people. Please join me in a salute to our first senior class, the graduating class of 1968. You superbly tackled all of the startup work with great enthusiasm, set examples, and steered the maiden voyage in proper direct fashion. Can our grads of 68 please stand up and be recognized? Uh, I think they did, I'm not sure. Um, all right, thank you. With their model successfully set my class, the class of 69 and others built on what they began. So, Commodores of 68, 69 and all subsequent classes, <clears throat> raise your glasses to toast all that we were blessed with during those days and what followed in our lives because our time together at Abramson. Now please join Susan Bowery Johansson and Judy Johns Heathcote as they lead us in reciting our alma mater. That's it. Well, I'm not going to recite the alpha model. So there it is. Thank you, cameraman Brent Fontenot, and uh, we'll see y'all hopefully at another one. Maybe we could do one here at the beach. What an idea, right? Bye, y'all. <laughs>